Say not a cloud in the sky, Rach. Yep. Not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have a nose. <laughs> I left Rach to have a nose and I quickly got some porridge on the go. We uh, ate that and then we were on the road out of Lamberis up to Penny Pass and then heading down to the start of the Watkin Path. I made a previous video of a walk up Snowdon, uh, particularly the Watkin Path, and it's proved quite popular. So I thought in this walk, while we're on the same route going up, I'll try and answer the questions that people have asked. We arrived just after 8am and got the last parking space on the side road next to the A498. I've had quite a few questions about parking, so I hope this information helps. If you look at the map, the A498 is the road and you can see there's a little road that runs parallel you can park on. You can also park just past there. There's about 40 spaces. It's £3 for four hours and £6 all day. I'd recommend the £6 to park all day. And then just to repeat again, try in January Tacey for what three words and the postcode is LL554NR. <laughs> Backwards again. Yeah. So the Watkin Path is the path that starts the lowest out of any of the routes to the top of Snowdon, starting just above sea level. They say that this is probably the second hardest route to the top of Snowdon. Cribgrock route is probably the hardest. It had rained two days earlier, so basically there was a lot of water still coming off the mountain, so all the waterfalls were running nicely. If you stay tuned to the end of this video, you'll never guess what we did see when we were coming back through these woods on the way down. Because soon out of the woods and you can see the walking path information board, which gives a map and some information about the actual walk and how it was opened as the first British footpath. And just around the corner, you soon see the waterfalls and you make your way up past those. Now this section always takes me ages to get up because <laughs> uh, I end up just taking photos and watching the waterfalls. Um, but it, it is a really nice start to the route, the water's so clear. I've had a lot of questions just asking how far the waterfalls are from the start of the walking path. You're looking about 1.5 miles. It's a, it's a steady walk, it's not too difficult at all. And if you are a bit scared of heights, you should have no problem walking up to the top of the waterfalls and the Gladstone Rock. Scott pointed out to me at this point that, that this section of the walking path was used as the set for the Carry On Up the Khyber film in 1968. Another gorgeous day. <laughs> no, I have to pick them. It's about half nine now and it's like loads of people out there on this on the walking path today loads of people We were soon past the waterfalls and heading towards Gladstone Rock. We first then passed the old ruins of some of the miners' buildings. In the summary on the map, we're following the, what's highlighted in the pink route, the walking path up. However, we're going to make the route even more interesting and uh, take an alternative route back down, which will join up with the walking path at the top of the waterfalls. Another regular question I get asked is how fit do you have to be to walk up the walking path? Well, in answer to that, if you can walk 10 miles comfortably, then it shouldn't be a problem. Just bear in mind, obviously, you are going up one of the hardest routes, so be prepared for the climbs, which get uh, steeper towards the end, especially the scramble. Okay, so you can see this section's relatively flat, and it's quite a nice walk, and you, there's no reason to be scared of heights. In the distance, you can just see Gladstone Rock. So this is where the plaque was set for the to commemorate when this walk was opened by the Prime Minister at the time. 
So just after there, you'll pass these old ruins again and then start what's going to be the hardest part of the climb then. Um, so it just starts off through this uh, gap here. You can see the summit of Snowdon in the distance. And we start then making our ascent then up these steps. Uh, at this point, there was a lot of people um, taking part in a rock triathlon. So they'd already swam a mile or so, uh, cycled 50 miles. Then they were going up and down the Watkin path and then having to cycle 50 miles to the finish. This is where you'll see the scramble for the first time here. And there you go in the distance again, you can see the last uh, scramble where it is really steep up to the summit. It's from this point onwards really, you need a good head for heights. So there was a, a steady stream now of athletes coming past us. It's this section here where when the weather comes in now, until you get to the ridge, if it's foggy, you can kind of get a bit disorientated. But once you're up at the ridge, it's worth making a point of walking off from the path. And so you can see down towards the lakes and you can see the pig track and the miners track and then creep got uh, across the top there. time for a quick photo and then we were back on it so if you look down now you can see the wow the uh, walking path snakes up the hill <laughs> this section is relatively flat so you can catch a breather now we've been going two hours 36 minutes at this point we've done 3.6 miles so you know we've only got half a mile or so to go but this last section now say so it's worth catching a breather here and then you'll hit the uh, the last scramble the scramble takes you up basically to join the Riddu path and then you'll turn right and it's about 200 meters then to the summit so one of the questions i've been asked is um can you take your dog up the walking path well yeah as long as you've got a labrador or a something of that sort of size it won't have a problem but uh, smaller dogs when you get up to around this section you may have to carry them a bit this is the last flat bit now before so if you show them out the contour lines get really close together from this point onwards um you've got to be really careful on this one especially in the wet this section it's just scree there's, there's nothing actually fixed until you get to about the last top third when there is actually fixed steps but until you get to that point, it's um, just worth ensuring that you check anything that you're going to put weight on and stuff as you climb this section. Just Again, we've got uh, both runners and walkers coming both ways at this section, so it was... Uh, Quite crowded, but it was a lovely day, so everybody was out enjoying the mountain. We're starting to get towards the step section now, so you can see that the path's starting to get better. Looking back down, this is where you can basically get a good view of the ridge that we're going to go back along. So we're going to go down there and then drop dramatically in height to then cut back and across an old railroad towards the top of the waterfalls. You can see that light rock sticking up that's the one that says the the walking path sign so you're joining the Riddu path now um we'll turn right and then head up now at this point it gets even crowded because uh, there was a 50k and 100k uh, event going on as well so we had from this point uh, a lot of uh, competitors from two races that were taking part in the day 
plus the normal foot traffic, so it was very, very busy on mountain. So we made that last 200 meter climb, but as of the end of May, the cafe is still shut. I have been told that by the, uh, the end of June, it will be back up and running. So just time to get a uh, quick photo with Scott and Gina. Well, and then we headed over to the side just to look down onto Lamberis and then just taking in the crowds waiting and queuing to get to the photo at the top. So just in summary, if you look at the map, that's where you see the waterfalls. That's halfway up the waterfalls. That is the top of the waterfalls. And you head up there, that's Gladstone Rock. Carry on a bit further. That is basically just after the ruins where you start the main climb. Uh, worth having a rest there. Then you go up to the ridge, worth veering off there to look over down towards the lakes. And then you push on to the summit, 1,085 metres. And then this is the route that we're going to take to go down. So if you're still watching, we're going to go over that very narrow bit. And then it does get a little bit wider then as you go down. So there's a bit more room to manoeuvre and then we're going to drop down quite dramatically in altitude and then head along an old railroad track, then pick up the side of the waterfalls and then head back to the car via the cafe for an ice cream. So that this route is going to be nine miles in total. So say you're looking at just over four miles to get to the summit of the Watkin path. So as far as we could see, we had um, athletes walking towards us. And so these were on a 50k or 100k walk and run that day. It was the uh, Ultra Trail Snowdonia event. If you look left, we can see the walking path there, several hundred meters below us. And we're basically going to walk parallel to that for a short amount of time. But obviously a lot higher, we've got a lot of height to lose further on in the walk to get back on that track. I found this section quite difficult because of the volume of people coming the other way. So we were having to give way uh, quite a lot, to, especially halfway along here, this ridge. It does get very, very narrow. If you look into the distance there where I've just circled, that's where the Rid Do path goes to the right and we were going to carry on straight up and then go to the left to follow that ridge. And as far as you can see, there's people coming the other way. And here it just gives you an indication of just how narrow the path is getting. So that side is the Ridu path, and then over in the distance you can just make out the Ranger path. And then if we look back down this way again, you can still see the walking path there. So this is the section now where we split off. So we're going to the left or we're going straight over. And if you look, the path on the right is the Riddu path, which would take you down to Riddu. So we got over that uh, little peak there and then we started heading. The path then is actually getting wider. Uh, the guy on the left here uh, had picked up an injury and um, we saw the helicopter come in and uh, drop a paramedic off. I uh, don't know if he was airlifted or not, but uh, I hope he's okay anyway. So this is where we're starting to like, drop down now. It had uh, started to get quieter now, just back to sort of like how you would expect it for this time of year on this section of the path. If we look back up now, you can see there's there's not as many people now actually in the shots. And then we got to this part of the walk now that where the path is pretty much fell away. So we had to um, just basically uh, make our way slowly down this section. Uh, so most of the path seems to have gone to the bottom of this <laughs> section here. So it was very slippy. So we just took a time and um, negotiated a path down there. So once we're at the bottom of there, still nice and wide footpaths. Um, we made our way then along. Uh, 
you can still make out the walking path to the left so we, uh, just uh, every time we got a gap in the, the rocks and stuff to see over so we knew exactly where we were going but it was just that we still had a lot of uh, altitude to lose to to get back onto the, the walking path so we're carrying on I say it's a beautiful day the last time we were up here it was like mid 30s and it was still um, high 20s uh, so you know again we picked a really good clear day for it so then we get to like now if you look at the top left you can just make out where the path up is going but, but uh, it's just a bit of a drop down here so we were just negotiating and a chat about the best route uh, and then uh, carried on down if you can see like the, all the orange flags I don't envy you had the job of going to collect all them who works for the ultra trail snow don't you <laughs> race team but there was a lot of orange flags that needed collecting so on the right here at this point you can see some old mine workings again and this this uh, part of the walk as well the path does uh, somewhat uh, <laughs> drop away quite rapidly so we can see on the, t the left hand side in the distance we could see the railroad we wanted to get to so it was again it was just a quick um, quick chat here just to determine which route we were going to go down this section because it was quite a steep drop so there wasn't much room for error um, in amongst all that there is like a cut steps that's um, was also acting as like a little waterfall so once we'd sort of climbed down a bit and found those we could pick those up and then that made this section uh, easier so we jumped onto that bit and then made our way down So from this section on now onwards, it, it gets relatively easy and it's, it, it's uh, not that complicated of a walk now. So some people have asked as well, um, you know, what, what should you, you take when you climb up uh, this, this route? So uh, I just suggest taking a really good pair of walking boots or something to, so you don't twist your ankle. Take plenty of water. You'll need a couple of liters of water or, you know, drink because you know you do you do get thirsty. Take some good snacks, um, just to keep your energy levels up. And um, if you're going on your own, just probably advice to tell somebody that you're going, just to make people aware of your plans, just in case anything does happen. And and basically, leave no trace you know take your litter home with you and um, pick a day if you can if you've got the uh, opportunity and you're in the area for a few days try and pick the best day because it does make the, a hell of a difference if you go on a nice sunny day compared to a day where you know the, the weather's closing and it could potentially be raining snowing or and visibility is poor because it, the, the walk is just isn't as enjoyable anyway down at this section here you can see that they've already air dropped some um, more stone so they're actually making this path better so it's going to basically be a more all round path all year round path uh, on the left hand side you can see some of the mine workings there as well this is basically your typical bridges that they've built on this section so there's a slate bridge going across all the, the streams that are coming down the hillside so you don't have to walk through the bogs and stuff you can see they've dropped some large stones which like makes a series of stepping stones um, and they are cutting in new paths as well which they've really put shale on and stuff already so we're just going to follow this now all the way until we get to the old railroad it was at this section here we could see the helicopter come in to get that guy off the mountain and so that's where we were earlier when I pointed him out and um, so hopefully he was okay so we carried on down now again crossing these stepping stones you got nice views to the left of uh, the walking path that the route we took up and some of the mining buildings and things and then it didn't take long then before we were actually uh, passing a few more bags that had been dropped. Nice peat bog there. <laughs> and 
then we were finally at the railroad. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was a railroad because if you look at the ground, you can see like there's actually bars across where it looks like there used to be the sleepers. So we followed this along until we get to a cutting. We went through the cutting and then there's like a, a, a bridge structure. And just to the far side of the bridge, there is actually another, what would have been some sort of tr trolley or track that goes down because I could see in the rocks there was actually holes where something was laid. But I point it out on the map here, put an arrow there, but uh, go down there. That This path here will take you back directly to the top of where the waterfalls start on the Watkin Pass. So that's what we're going to do now. As you can see, this this part was the upward route for the uh, Ultra Trail Snowdonia, but I think they must have had sort of time cut off points because, as say, as we were descending, the people coming up were relentless. I think there was about over nine hundred competitors, but um, I, th I assume they must have had some sort of cut off points, and because the number of people coming up just stopped almost instantly, and say we had almost had this section of the mountain to ourselves then for most of the descent following that. I say when we're here and it's such a nice day like this, you just can't help going for a quick dip. So, uh, me and Rach headed uh, down this way for a swim and Scott and Gina went the other way um, sticking to the path yeah. uh, so you see you pass some of the old ruins yeah. um, and, a, and a lot of people just come up this far you, and you can see why so, so if you're still watching thanks for sticking with us and uh, hopefully this video has been of some use and I say if you can give us a like and subscribe it really helps this channel out. <laughs> yeah, I was... Are you going all the way under? Yeah. Oh I was just gonna... I was just gonna cool my legs. Oh. <laughs> Okay. I'll do. Cool now. <laughs> so we just carry on down now, just walking parallel to the waterfalls. this section of the bridge this is where you have to basically you can take a right and head back over towards the walking path it's quite steep here so you, uh, you come away from the waterfall a bit and just follow that path down to the right so we were soon saying goodbye to the waterfalls and then heading back down towards the woodland okay. yeah. so People have asked how far actually is the walking path. Well, it's it's just over eight miles if you stick to the path and go up and down that route. You want to be expecting to take six to seven hours to do the route in total in good conditions. The route we've taken today is nine miles. It's 
some people have asked what's the footpath like up to the waterfall well I'm just filming the floor here <laughs> so you can see um, you know it's a good well maintained path for where it is so you, know, you shouldn't have any problem walking from the car park up to the waterfalls and this is the this was a bit of a surprise not seen this before but they say the whole hillside was absolutely covered in goats as far as you could see you could just see see goats there's even some like little baby goats in amongst all of them as well stump he's, he's, he's eating his way through it so we're coming towards the end of the walk now I hope I've answered all the questions that or at least started to answer the questions that have come up in the past on the previous walks up Snowden again thanks thanks for taking the time to watch this video if you made it this far and say so if you can uh, like and subscribe it really helps this channel out We'll be back up a mountain again soon as we're heading over to the uh, Lake District. Yeah, yeah. All, all survived. Next adventure. <laughs> Everyone's still talking. <laughs> Sounds like there's a waterfall down there as well across the road. Cafe. Cafe time. Yeah. So that's the route that we descended and join the walking path back at the top of the waterfalls and then track waterfalls down. So in total, say the walk we've done today has just been nine miles. The roads really thinned out now with parking at this time of the day, but uh, I say we, we had a well-deserved ice cream and then basically headed back to the car and made our way back to Lamberis. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.